Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to become a software developer in record time. So the first thing you got to do is not get caught up in tutorial hell. That's a big mistake. A lot of people do. They keep buying more and more tutorials, more and more tutorials, more and more tutorials. Why do they do that? Two reasons. A, they don't understand the basics well enough. B, they're a little bit scared to jump into the game. So I'm going to give you the steps on how to quickly become a professional developer. I've been doing this since the 1920s so i know what it takes to quickly become a developer so step number one you have to learn the foundations of software development it doesn't matter what language you choose it really doesn't matter what language you choose except for ruby in terms of software development all the modern programming languages java javascript c sharp php python ruby they all good they're all good they all produce great apps you can find examples with any of these languages where you can find amazing apps php facebook linkedin is java instagram is uh i think that's ruby actually uh, python django you saw that with uh instagram right no twitter anyway you get the idea i forget all of a sudden who used ruby they don't want people to know now. They're a little embarrassed. Okay, they're not embarrassed about Ruby. Ruby is actually viable as well. So don't worry about the languages that you decide to learn the basics with because the basics are universal. Once you learn C Sharp, you could easily jump into Java. You could easily jump into JavaScript. You could easily jump into Python. doesn't matter. So pick whatever language that suits your needs at this time whatever catches your fancy as they say and go with that but the key is to learn the foundations of programming that means you understand the basic constructs of a programming language so what does this include that includes things like variables and arrays and functions and collection types basic stuff um, understanding flow control conditional statements understanding object orientation procedural code this is all part of the foundations and the basics besides core language constructs like functions arrays and objects and variables etc 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 you have to understand the context in which these languages reside so let me give you an example if you're learning javascript most javascript programming is done in the web browser not all but most and as such you have to understand the web you have to understand HTTP. You have to understand web browsers. You have to understand how the engines that process the JavaScript code in the web browsers, how they process that code, how it all works together. If you're going to do full stack development, you have to understand client and server. You have to understand the request response model sessions, the stateless nature of the web, et cetera, et cetera. All these things I'm talking about are not specific to code but they're related to code what does that mean if you do a simple tutorial on a language and they uh, don't give you the context as i discussed you're going to be lost you won't be able to code if you do um, a tutorial that teaches you how to build a quote twitter clone with this language or how to build a, an api with that language that is no good to you if you don't understand the foundations first and foremost you have to understand the foundations once you have that the whole world opens up to you in terms of coding if you don't want to if you don't know what i'm talking about that means you don't understand the foundations and you have to take a foundational course all right so you got your foundations you also realize you're not a baby anymore. You realize that it doesn't really matter which language you choose, you choose because once you know one, once you know C Sharp to learn Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby, it doesn't matter. Very simple, very simple. So language doesn't matter, number one. Number two, you got to learn your foundations. Then number three, you got to get out of your nerd diapers and you got to go into the real world and do one to two real projects for some friend of yours or some client and don't expect to get paid consider it the stage now the stage year work the staging work the staging work the this these one two or three projects one to two two or three depending you know 
not too big. You don't want to you don't want to be there for months, but you know, two week long projects. This is going to give you huge confidence because you're going to take your foundational coding skills and you're going to put them to work. You're going to put them to work. Now you noticed I went from number one, don't care about the language. Number two, learn your foundations. Number three, do something for real. I didn't say go do 20 courses, tutorial courses. That's no good. Maybe you could fit in one or two short ones just to give you, a, give you an idea of what it's about. But you have to understand something about real world programming. In the real world, there's no fixed way to build any type of app. There's 20 different ways you could build a Twitter clone. There's 25 different ways to build a shopping cart system. When you do a tutorial, you're just seeing how one person figures they should put together a project. Many times, how you put together a particular type of project, Twitter clone, shopping cart, uh, an API, microservices based system, how you put that together largely depends on the needs of the particular project, not just the software needs, but also the business needs of the project. So I'll give you an example. You go work for a company or you get a freelance job at a company and they want to uh, expose their database to the public through uh, an API, through a series of microservices. What technology you use to create that depends on possibly the infrastructure that they use. So if they have built everything else in Java and you want to go in there and do it with JavaScript and Node, they may be totally against that because they're going to say to you, no, 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 we already have a big Java investment. We don't want to have another technology stack on top of that, right? Or it could be they built it all in, you know, a backend with Node.js and Express and you happen to like Python Django and they're not going to want to do it in Python Django. They want to, they want, they're going to want to continue and extend in Node. So there's one example where the business considerations will impact in terms of what technology is going to be used to implement whatever they want to implement. That's another thing. The other thing is the technology. Sometimes certain technologies lend itself better given a certain job. So when I would go in as a freelancer, I would literally sit down, uh, interview the client, look over specification, understand what their needs were in terms of the company, in terms of the project, in terms of their already invested, in terms of the assets, the computer, the uh, software assets they've invested in already. And then, and, and then in there, I would choose a technology. And sometimes, oftentimes, it wasn't my first choice in terms of my personal taste. So you have to learn to be language agnostic. So understand that. So number one rule to re recap, you got to be language agnostic. Whatever language you learn is fine. It doesn't matter because once you learn your fundamentals, number two, you'll be able to pivot from one language to the next. Maybe do one to two tutorials, but then you want to really go out there and build something for real just to gain experience because one of the big realities of being a developer is that you're constantly learning as you're uh, writing code. Even people with four, five, six, seven, eight years experience you're constantly learning new things. One of the big jobs of being a professional developer, one of the big jobs is that you are able to learn new tech quickly. How do you learn new tech quickly? Understand your fundamentals very quickly. So you've done one or two freebie jobs. Now your next step for you is to actually put up a website that represents your skills where you can showcase the real jobs that you built. People who might want to hire you as an employee or might want to hire you as a freelancer, they're going to be far more impressed if you show them real projects that you worked with real people rather than a bunch of projects or tutorials that you bought for 10 bucks somewhere. It's not the same thing. Why? Because when you build real projects and you're able to sit down with a client, analyze their needs, put together the tech stack that they require for that job and execute and deliver working with a real person, that's 10,000 times more valuable than doing a tutorial where you just follow along in a video. So there you go. I know for a lot of people, it's daunting to go from having done your foundation training to actually building something for real. But with proper training, 
a little bit of self-confidence, take a little bit of a leap, you'll be fine. Remember, professional developers are constantly learning. Coding is a process of uh, refinement and breaking things that break all the time. Code breaks all the time. That's why we have iOS version 14 and not version 1, right? Version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're adding new features, but they're actually fixing a lot of bugs all the time. What are bugs? Bugs are just developers making mistakes. That's all. Sometimes it could be logical mistakes. Sometimes it could be just basic typos, clerical mistakes. Uh, sometimes it's structural mistakes. But that's just part of the process. So don't be afraid to write code that will break. If you follow these steps, you become a professional developer in record time, much faster than the dude or dudette who's going on and just keeps on buying tutorials and doing tutorials, doing tutorials, hope thinking, you gotta learn this, you gotta learn this, you gotta learn this. No, you learn your fundamentals and then you learn everything else as you get paid. All right, hope this is useful. Just in case you're wondering, why should you listen to this guy with the crazy hair? I've been a developer since the 1990s. I'm 169 years old, so I've seen it all backwards and forwards. I've seen all the technology trends over the last 30 years. It's the way it goes. All right, I hope you find it useful. Ciao. Look at this high tech. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable technology. Thank you.